Arabic, Wikipedia article audio. Arabic or Arabic, superscript 1 plus or minus UE Araba or is a central Semitic language that first emerged in Iron Age northwestern Arabia and is now the lingua franca of the Arab world. It is named after the Arabs, a term initially used to describe peoples living from Mesopotamia in the east to the anti-Lebanon mountains in the west, in northwestern Arabia, and in the Sinai Peninsula. The modern written language is derived from classical Arabic. It is widely taught in schools and universities, and is used to varying degrees in workplaces, government, and the media. The two formal varieties are grouped together as Literary Arabic, which is the official language of 26 states and the liturgical language of Islam. Modern Standard Arabic largely follows the grammatical standards of Classical Arabic and uses much of the same vocabulary. However, it has discarded some grammatical constructions and vocabulary that no longer have any counterpart in the spoken varieties, and has adopted certain new constructions and vocabulary from the spoken varieties. Much of the new vocabulary is used to denote concepts that have arisen in the post-classical era, especially in modern times. Classification History During the Middle Ages, literary Arabic was a major vehicle of culture in Europe, especially in science, mathematics, and philosophy. As a result, Many European languages have also borrowed many words from it. Arabic influence, mainly in vocabulary, is seen in European languages, mainly Spanish and to a lesser extent Portuguese, Valenkian and Catalan, owing to both the proximity of Christian European and Muslim Arab civilizations and 800 years of Arabic culture and language in the Iberian Peninsula referred to in Arabic as Al-Andalus. Sicilian has about 500 Arabic words as result of Sicily being progressively conquered by Saracens from North Africa, from the mid-9th to mid-10th centuries. Many of these words relate to agriculture and related activities. Balkan languages, including Greek and Bulgarian, have also acquired a significant number of Arabic words through contact with Ottoman Turkish. Arabic has influenced many languages around the globe throughout its history. Some of the most influenced languages are Persian, Turkish, Spanish, Maltese, Urdu, Kashmiri, Kurdish, Bosnian, Kazakh, Bengali, Hindi, Malay, Maldivian, Indonesian, Pashto, Punjabi, Tagalog, Sindhi and Hausa and some languages in parts of Africa. Conversely, Arabic has borrowed words from other languages including Greek and Persian in medieval times, and contemporary European languages such as English and French in modern times. Classical Arabic is the liturgical language of 1.7 billion Muslims and modern standard Arabic is one of six official languages of the United Nations. All varieties of Arabic combined are spoken by perhaps as many as 422 million speakers in the Arab world, making it the fifth most spoken language in the world. Arabic is written with the Arabic alphabet which is an abjad script and is written from right to left, although the spoken varieties are sometimes written in ASCII Latin from left to right with no standardized orthography. Arabic is a central Semitic language, closely related to the Northwest Semitic languages, the ancient South Arabian languages, and various other Semitic languages of Arabia such as Dodanitaik. The Semitic languages changed a great deal between Proto-Semitic and the establishment of the Central Semitic languages, particularly in grammar. Innovations of the Central Semitic language say Euro all maintained in Arabica Euro include. There are several features which Classical Arabic, the modern Arabic varieties, 
as well as the Sephitic and Hismaic inscriptions share which are unattested in any other central Semitic language variety, including the Dodanitic and Tamanitic languages of the northern Hijaz. These features are evidence of common descent from a hypothetical ancestor, Proto-Arabic. The following features can be reconstructed with confidence for Proto-Arabic. Old Arabic Arabia boasted a wide variety of Semitic languages in antiquity. In the southwest, various central Semitic languages both belonging to and outside of the ancient South Arabian family were spoken. It is also believed that the ancestors of the modern South Arabian languages were also spoken in Southern Arabia at this time. To the north, in the oases of Northern Hijaz, Dodanitic and Tamanitic held some prestige as inscriptional languages. In Najd and parts of Western Arabia, a language known to scholars as Tahamudic C is attested. In Eastern Arabia, Inscriptions in a script derived from ASA attest to a language known as Hasidic. Finally, on the northwestern frontier of Arabia, various languages known to scholars as Tahamudic B, Tahamudic D, Safadic, and Hismaic are attested. The last two share important isoglosses with later forms of Arabic leading scholars to theorize that Safadic and Hismaic are in fact early forms of Arabic and that they should be considered Old Arabic. Beginning in the 1st century CE, fragments of Northern Old Arabic are attested in the Nabataean script across Northern Arabia. By the 4th century CE, the Nabataean Aramaic writing system had come to express varieties of Arabic other than that of the Nabataeans. Old Hijazi and Classical Arabic In late pre-Islamic times, a trans-dialectal and trans-communal variety of Arabic emerged in the Hijaz which continued living its parallel life after literary Arabic had been institutionally standardized in the 2nd and 3rd century of the Hijra, most strongly in Judeo-Christian texts, keeping alive ancient features eliminated from the learned tradition. This variety and both its classicizing and lay iterations have been termed Middle Arabic in the past, but they are thought to continue in Old Higazi register. It is clear that the orthography of the Quran was not developed for the standardized form of classical Arabic, rather, it shows the attempt on the part of writers to record an archaic form of Old Higazi. In the late 6th century AD, a relatively uniform intertribal poetic koine distinct from the spoken vernaculars developed based on the Bedouin dialects of Najd, probably in connection with the court of Al-Aara. During the first Islamic century, the majority of Arabic poets and Arabic writing persons spoke Arabic as their mother tongue. Their texts, although mainly preserved in far later manuscripts, contain traces of non-standardized classical Arabic elements in morphology and syntax. The standardization of classical Arabic reached completion around the end of the 8th century. The first comprehensive description of the Arabiya Arabic, S.A. Bawahiz al Kitabi, is based first of all upon a corpus of poetic texts, in addition to Quran usage and Bedouin informants whom he considered to be reliable speakers of the Arabiya. By the 8th century, knowledge of classical Arabic had become an essential prerequisite for rising into the higher classes throughout the Islamic world. Charles Ferguson's Koine theory claims that the modern Arabic dialects collectively descend from a single military Koine that sprang up during the Islamic conquests, this view has been challenged in recent times. Ahmed al-Jalad proposes that there were at least two considerably distinct types of Arabic on the eve of the conquests, northern and central. The modern dialects emerged from a new contact situation produced following the conquests. Instead of the emergence of a single or multiple koines, 
the dialects contain several sedimentary layers of borrowed and aerial features, which they absorbed at different points in their linguistic histories. According to Verstig and Bickerton, colloquial Arabic dialects arose from pigeonized Arabic formed from contact between Arabs and conquered peoples. Pigeonization and subsequent creolization among Arabs and Arabized peoples could explain relative morphological and phonological simplicity of vernacular Arabic compared to classical and MSA. Neo-Arabic Arabic usually designates one of three main variants, Classical Arabic, Modern Standard Arabic and Colloquial or Dialectal Arabic. Classical Arabic is the language found in the Quran, used from the period of pre-Islamic Arabia to that of the Abbasid Caliphate. Theoretically, Classical Arabic is considered normative, according to the syntactic and grammatical norms laid down by classical grammarians and the vocabulary defined in classical dictionaries. In practice, however, Modern authors almost never write in pure classical Arabic, instead using a literary language with its own grammatical norms and vocabulary, commonly known as Modern Standard Arabic. Classical, Modern Standard and Spoken Arabic MSA is the variety used in most current, printed Arabic publications, spoken by some of the Arabic media across North Africa and the Middle East, and understood by most educated Arabic speakers. Literary Arabic and Standard Arabic are less strictly defined terms that may refer to Modern Standard Arabic or Classical Arabic. Language and Dialect Some of the differences between Classical Arabic and Modern Standard Arabic are as follows. MSA uses much classical vocabulary that is not present in the spoken varieties, but deletes classical words that sound obsolete in MSA. In addition, MSA has borrowed or coined a large number of terms for concepts that did not exist in Quranic times, and MSA continues to evolve. Some words have been borrowed from other languages. A Euro notice that transliteration mainly indicates spelling and not real pronunciation. Influence of Arabic on other languages However, the current preference is to avoid direct borrowings, preferring to either use loan translations, or to coin new words using forms within existing roots. An earlier tendency was to redefine an older word although this has fallen into disuse, plus or minus copyright Jarada newspaper I, certain lexical items, e.g., J.A.B. bring I a shay one-fourth which thing, illy, merger of slash e registered trademark e slash n slash a degree e slash. Some words in English and other European languages are derived from Arabic often through other European languages, especially Spanish and Italian. Among them are commonly used words like coffee, cotton, and magazine. English words more recognizably of Arabic origin include algebra, alcohol, alchemy, alkali, zenith, and nadir. Arabic words also made their way into several West African languages as Islam spread across the Sahara. Variants of Arabic words such as Kitabi have spread to the languages of African groups who had no direct contact with Arab traders. Since throughout the Islamic world, Arabic occupied a position similar to that of Latin in Europe, many of the Arabic concepts in the fields of science, philosophy, commerce, etc. were coined from Arabic roots by non-native Arabic speakers, notably by Aramaic and Persian translators, and then found their way into other languages. This process of using Arabic roots, especially in Kurdish and Persian, to translate foreign concepts continued through to the 18th and 19th centuries when swaths of Arab-inhabited lands were under Ottoman rule. 
If the word occurs after another word ending in a consonant, there is a smooth transition from final consonant to initial vowel, e.g., u, superscript 1 alajtama e meeting slash aladai timi e slash dot. If the word occurs after another word ending in a vowel, the initial vowel of the word is elided, e.g., uu, plus or minus beto el muta r house of the director slash batch tel muti r slash dot. If the word occurs at the beginning of an utterance, a glottal stop is added onto the beginning, e.g., uuu al beto. Hilwa. The house is, slash e al beige to hilwa. Slash. The most important sources of borrowings into Arabic are from the related languages Aramaic, which used to be the principal, international language of communication throughout the ancient Near and Middle East, Ethiopic, and to a lesser degree Hebrew. In addition, many cultural, religious and political terms have entered Arabic from Iranian languages, notably Middle Persian, Parthian, and Persian and Hellenistic Greek, Alembic from Ambix, Almanac from Almanacian. Some Arabic borrowings from Semitic or Persian languages are, as presented in De Pra Copyright Mare's above cited book. There have been many instances of national movements to convert Arabic script into Latin script or to Romanize the language. Currently, the only Arabic language to use Latin script is Maltese. The Beirut newspaper La Syrie pushed for the change from Arabic script to Latin letters in 1922. The major head of this movement was Louis Messinan, a French Orientalist, who brought his concern before the Arabic Language Academy in Damascus in 1928. Messinan's attempt at Romanization failed as the academy and population viewed the proposal as an attempt from the Western world to take over their country. Said Afghani, a member of the academy, mentioned that the movement to Romanize the script was a Zionist plan to dominate Lebanon. Structure After the period of colonialism in Egypt, Egyptians were looking for a way to reclaim and re-emphasize Egyptian culture. As a result, some Egyptians pushed for an Egyptianization of the Arabic language in which the formal Arabic and the colloquial Arabic would be combined into one language and the Latin alphabet would be used. There was also the idea of finding a way to use hieroglyphics instead of the Latin alphabet, but this was seen as too complicated to use. A scholar, Salama Musa agreed with the idea of applying a Latin alphabet to Arabic, as he believed that would allow Egypt to have a closer relationship with the West. He also believed that Latin script was key to the success of Egypt as it would allow for more advances in science and technology. This change in alphabet, he believed, would solve the problems inherent with Arabic such as a lack of written vowels and difficulties writing foreign words that made it difficult for non-native speakers to learn. Ahmed Lutfi as Said and Muhammad Azmi, two Egyptian intellectuals, agreed with Musa and supported the push for Romanization. The idea that Romanization was necessary for modernization and growth in Egypt continued with Abd al-Aziz Fahmi in 1944. He was the chairman for the Writing and Grammar Committee for the Arabic Language Academy of Cairo. However, this effort failed as the Egyptian people felt a strong cultural tie to the Arabic alphabet. In particular, the older Egyptian generations believed that the Arabic alphabet had strong connections to Arab values and history, which is easy to believe due to the long history of the Arabic alphabet in Muslim societies. The Quran introduced a new way of writing to the world. People began studying applying the unique styles they learned from the Quran into not only their own writing, but also their culture. 
Writers studied the unique structure and format of the Quran in order to identify and apply the figurative devices and their impact on the reader. The Quran inspired musicality in poetry through the internal rhythm of the verses. The arrangement of words, how certain sounds create harmony, and the agreement of rhymes create the sense of rhythm within each verse. At times, the chapters of the Quran only have the rhythm in common. Culture in the Quran Arabic and Islam Dialects and Descendants The repetition in the Quran introduced the true power and impact repetition can have in poetry. The repetition of certain words and phrases made them appear more firm and explicit in the Quran. The Quran uses constant metaphors of blindness and deafness to imply unbelief. Metaphors were not a new concept to poetry, however the strength of extended metaphors was. The explicit imagery in the Quran inspired many poets to include and focus on the feature in their own work. The poet Ibn al-Mutaz wrote a book regarding the figures of speech inspired by his study of the Quran. O oh, poets such as Badr Shakir al Sayyab expresses his political opinion in his work through imagery inspired by the forms of more harsher imagery used in the Quran. The Quran uses figurative devices in order to express the meaning in the most beautiful form possible. The study of the pauses in the Quran as well as other rhetoric allow it to be approached in a multiple ways. Although the Quran is known for its fluency and harmony, the structure can be best described as chaotic. The surahs also known as chapters of the Quran are not placed in chronological order. The only constant in their structure is that the longest are placed first and shorter ones follow. The topics discussed in the chapter often have no relation to each other and only share their sense of rhyme. The Quran introduces to poetry the idea of abandoning order and scattering narratives throughout the text. Harmony is also present in the sound of the Quran. The elongations and accents present in the Quran create a harmonious flow within the writing. Unique sound of the Quran recited, due to the accents, create a deeper level of understanding through a deeper emotional connection. The Quran is written in a language that is simple and understandable by people. The simplicity of the writing inspired later poets to write in a more clear and clear-cut style. The words of the Quran, although unchanged, are to this day understandable and frequently used in both formal and informal Arabic. The simplicity of the language makes memorizing and reciting the Quran a slightly easier task. The writer al katabi explains how culture is a required element to create a sense of art in work as well as understand it. He believes that fluency and harmony the Quran possess are not the only elements that make it beautiful and create a bond between the reader and the text. While a lot of poetry was deemed comparable to the Quran in that it is equal to or better than the composition of the Quran, a debate rose that such statements are not possible because humans are incapable of composing work comparable to the Quran. Because the structure of the Quran made it difficult for a clear timeline to be seen, hadith were the main source of chronological order. The hadith were passed down from generation to generation and this tradition became a large resource for understanding the context. Poetry after the Quran began possessing this element of tradition by including ambiguity and background information to be required to understand the meaning. After the Quran came down to the people, the tradition of memorizing the verses became present. It is believed that the larger amount of the Quran memorized is a sign of a stronger faith. As technology improved over time, Hearing recitations of Quran became more available as well as more tools to help memorize the verses. 
the tradition of love poetry served as a symbolic representation of a Muslim's desire for a closer contact with their Lord. Examples While the influence of the Quran on Arabic poetry is explained and defended by numerous writers, some writers such as al bakilani believe that poetry and the Quran are in no conceivable way related due to the uniqueness of the Quran. Poetry's imperfections prove his points that that they cannot be compared with the fluency the Quran holds. Classical Arabic is the language of poetry and literature, it is also mainly the language of the Quran. At present, modern standard Arabic is also used in modernized versions of literary forms of the Quran. Classical Arabic is closely associated with the religion of Islam because the Quran was written in it. Most of the world's Muslims do not speak Classical Arabic as their native language, but many can read the Quranic script and recite the Quran. Among non-Arab Muslims, translations of the Quran are most often accompanied by the original text. Some Muslims present a monogenesis of languages and claim that the Arabic language was the language revealed by God for the benefit of mankind and the original language as a prototype system of symbolic communication, based upon its system of triconsonantal roots, spoken by man from which all other languages were derived, having first been corrupted. Judaism has a similar account with the Tower of Babel. Colloquial Arabic is a collective term for the spoken dialects of Arabic used throughout the Arab world, which differ radically from the literary language. The main dialectal division is between the varieties within and outside of the Arabian Peninsula, followed by that between sedentary varieties and the much more conservative Bedouin varieties. All of the varieties outside of the Arabian Peninsula have a large number of features in common with each other that are not found in Classical Arabic. This has led researchers to postulate the existence of a prestige Koine dialect in the one or two centuries immediately following the Arab conquest, whose features eventually spread to all of the newly conquered areas. Within the non-peninsula varieties, the largest difference is between the non-Egyptian North African dialects and the others. Moroccan Arabic in particular is hardly comprehensible to Arabic speakers east of Libya. One factor in the differentiation of the dialects is influence from the languages previously spoken in the areas, which have typically provided a significant number of new words and have sometimes also influenced pronunciation or word order. However, a much more significant factor for most dialects is, as among Romance languages, retention of different classical forms. Thus Iraqi Aku, Levantine Fa H and North African K trademark and all mean there is, and all come from classical Arabic forms, but now sound very different. Transcription is a broad IPA transcription so minor differences were ignored for easier comparison. Also, the pronunciation of modern standard Arabic differs significantly from region to region. According to Charles A. Ferguson, the following are some of the characteristic features of the Koine that underlies all of the modern dialects outside the Arabian Peninsula. Although many other features are common to most or all of these varieties, Ferguson believes that these features in particular are unlikely to have evolved independently more than once or twice and together suggest the existence of the Koine. Of the 29 proto-Semitic consonants, only one has been lost, asterisk slash e slash, which merged with slash slash. But the consonant asterisk slash e slash is still found in many colloquial Arabic dialects. Various other consonants have changed their sound too, but have remained distinct. An original asterisk slash p slash lenited to slash f slash, and asterisk slash e slash, 
consistently attested in pre-Islamic Greek transcription of Arabic languages, became palatalized to slash ee superscript to slash or slash ey slash by the time of the Quran and slash de slash slash e slash slash e slash or slash ey slash in msa. An original voiceless alveolar lateral fricative asterisk slash e slash became slash slash. Its emphatic counterpart slash ee registered trademark e slash was considered by Arabs to be the most unusual sound in Arabic. For most modern dialects, it has become an emphatic stop slash da slash with loss of the laterality or with complete loss of any pharyngealization or velarization. Slash D slash. Other changes may also have happened. Classical Arabic pronunciation is not thoroughly recorded and different reconstructions of the sound system of Proto-Semitic propose different phonetic values. One example is the emphatic consonants, which are pharyngealized in modern pronunciations but may have been velarized in the 8th century and glottalized in Proto-Semitic. Koine Dialect groups Reduction of slash j slash and slash w slash between vowels occurs in a number of circumstances and is responsible for much of the complexity of third-week verbs. Early Akkadian transcriptions of Arabic names shows that this reduction had not yet occurred as of the early part of the first millennium BC. The classical Arabic language as recorded was a poetic koine that reflected a consciously archaizing dialect, chosen based on the tribes of the western part of the Arabian Peninsula, who spoke the most conservative variants of Arabic. Even at the time of Muhammad and before, other dialects existed with many more changes, including the loss of most glottal stops, the loss of case endings, the reduction of the diphthongs slash aj slash and slash a slash into monophthongs slash e, oe slash, etc. Most of these changes are present in most or all modern varieties of Arabic. Phonology An interesting feature of the writing system of the Quran is that it contains certain features of Muhammad's native dialect of Mecca corrected through diacritics into the forms of standard classical Arabic. Among these features visible under the corrections are the loss of the glottal stop and a differing development of the reduction of certain final sequences containing slash j slash, evidently, final slash awa slash became slash ae slash as in the classical language, but final slash i slash became a different sound possibly slash ee slash. This is the apparent source of the Aleph Maka superscript 1 pound a ra restricted Aleph where a final slash i a slash is reconstructed, a letter that would normally indicate slash j slash or some similar high vowel sound, but is taken in this context to be a logical variant of Aleph and represent the sound slash ae slash. History 2 Literary Arabic Vowels Consonants Syllable structure Stress Levels of pronunciation Full pronunciation with pausa Formal short pronunciation Informal short pronunciation Colloquial varieties Vowels 2 Consonants 2 Grammar Although modern standard Arabic was a unitary language and is now used in Quran, its pronunciation varies somewhat from country to country and from region to region within a country. It is influenced by colloquial dialects. The colloquial spoken varieties of Arabic are learned at home and constitute the native languages of Arabic speakers. Formal literary Arabic is learned at school, although many speakers have a native-like command of the language, it is technically not the native language of any speakers. Both varieties can be both written and spoken, 
although the colloquial varieties are rarely written down and the formal variety is spoken mostly in formal circumstances, e.g., in radio broadcasts, formal lectures, parliamentary discussions and to some extent between speakers of different colloquial varieties. Even when the literary language is spoken, however, it is normally only spoken in its pure form when reading a prepared text out loud. When speaking extemporaneously, speakers tend to deviate somewhat from the strict literary language in the direction of the colloquial varieties. In fact, there is a continuous range of in-between spoken varieties, from nearly pure modern standard Arabic, to a form that still uses MSA grammar and vocabulary but with significant colloquial influence to a form of the colloquial language that imports a number of words and grammatical constructions in MSA, to a form that is close to pure colloquial but with the rough edges smoothed out, to pure colloquial. The particular variant used depends on the social class and education level of the speakers involved and the level of formality of the speech situation. Often it will vary within a single encounter, e.g., moving from nearly pure MSA to a more mixed language in the process of a radio interview, as the interviewee becomes more comfortable with the interviewer. This type of variation is characteristic of the diglossia that exists throughout the Arabic-speaking world. Although modern standard Arabic is a unitary language, its pronunciation varies somewhat from country to country and from region to region within a country. The variation in individual accents of MSA speakers tends to mirror corresponding variations in the colloquial speech of the speakers in question, but with the distinguishing characteristics moderated somewhat. Note that it is important in descriptions of Arabic phonology to distinguish between pronunciation of a given colloquial dialect and the pronunciation of MSA by these same speakers. Although they are related, they are not the same. For example, the phoneme that derives from proto-Semitic slash G slash has many different pronunciations in the modern spoken varieties, e.g. Speakers whose native variety has either or will use the same pronunciation when speaking MSA. Even speakers from Cairo, whose native Egyptian Arabic has, normally use when speaking MSA. The of Persian Gulf speakers is the only variant pronunciation which isn't found in MSA, is used instead. Another reason of different pronunciations is influence of colloquial dialects. The differentiation of pronunciation of informal dialects is the influence from other languages previously spoken and some still presently spoken in the regions, such as Coptic in Egypt, French. Ottoman Turkish, Italian, Spanish, Berber, Punic or Phoenician in North Africa, Himyaritic, Modern South Arabian and Old South Arabian in Yemen and Aramaic in the Levant. Another example, many colloquial varieties are known for a type of vowel harmony in which the presence of an emphatic consonant triggers backed allophones of nearby vowels in these circumstances and very often fronted to in all other circumstances. In many spoken varieties, the backed or emphatic vowel allophones spread a fair distance in both directions from the triggering consonant, in some varieties, the emphatic allophones spread throughout the entire word, usually including prefixes and suffixes, even at a distance of several syllables from the triggering consonant. Speakers of colloquial varieties with this vowel harmony tend to introduce it into their MSA pronunciation as well, but usually with a lesser degree of spreading than in the colloquial varieties. Modern Standard Arabic has six pure vowels with short slash a i u slash and corresponding long vowels slash a e i a u e slash. There are also two diphthongs, slash a j slash and slash a slash. The pronunciation of the vowels differs from speaker to speaker, 
in a way that tends to reflect the pronunciation of the corresponding colloquial variety. Nonetheless, there are some common trends. Most noticeable is the differing pronunciation of slash a slash and slash a e slash, which tend towards fronted, or in most situations, but a back in the neighborhood of emphatic consonants. Some accents and dialects, such as those of the high jazz, have central in all situations. The vowel slash a slash varies towards two. Listen to the final vowel in the recording of Ali Arabiya at the beginning of this article, for example. The point is, Arabic has only three short vowel phonemes, so those phonemes can have a very wide range of allophones. The vowels slash u slash n slash e slash are often affected somewhat in emphatic neighborhoods as well, with generally more back or centralized allophones but the differences are less great than for the low vowels. The pronunciation of short slash u slash n slash i slash tends towards end, respectively, in many dialects. The definition of both emphatic and neighborhood vary in ways that reflect corresponding variations in the spoken dialects. Generally, the consonants triggering emphatic allophones are the pharyngealized consonants slash t e to s e a degree e slash slash q slash and slash r slash, if not followed immediately by slash i slash. Frequently, the velar fricative slash x e pound slash also trigger emphatic allophones, occasionally also the pharyngeal consonants slash e a slash. Many dialects have multiple emphatic allophones of each vowel, depending on the particular nearby consonants. In most MSA accents, emphatic coloring of vowels is limited to vowels immediately adjacent to a triggering consonant, although in some it spreads a bit farther, e.g., uu wake time, uu wa superscript 1 and homeland, u superscript 3 uu. Copyright Wasa Superscript 1 Al Madinah Downtown or similar. In a non emphatic environment, the vowel slash a slash in the diphthong slash aj slash tends to be fronted even more than elsewhere, often pronounced or, hence superscript 3 safe sword but a superscript 1 pound if summer. However, in accents with no emphatic allophones of slash a slash, the pronunciation occurs in all situations. The phoneme slash de slash is represented by the Arabic letter jam and has many standard pronunciations. Is characteristic of North Algeria, Iraq, also in most of the Arabian Peninsula but with an allophonic in some positions, occurs in most of the Levant and most North Africa and is used in most of Egypt and some regions in Yemen and Oman. Generally this corresponds with the pronunciation in the colloquial dialects. In some regions in Sudan and Yemen, as well as in some Sudanese and Yemeni dialects, it may be either or, representing the original pronunciation of classical Arabic. Foreign words containing slash e slash may be transcribed with degree, u, u, y pound a euro or u a euro, mainly depending on the regional spoken variety of Arabic or the commonly diacriticized Arabic letter. Note also that in northern Egypt, where the Arabic letter jam is normally pronounced, a separate phoneme slash e slash, which may be transcribed with u, occurs in a small number of mostly non-Arabic loan words, e.g., slash e akita slash jacket. Slash i slash can be pronounced as or even. In some places of Maghrib it can be also pronounced as. Slash x slash n slash e pound slash r velar, post velar, or uvular. In many varieties, slash a, e slash are actually epiglottal. Slash L slash is pronounced as velarized in UUU slash E Ali H slash, the name of God, 
Qe. Ala, when the word follows a, a, u or a. Some speakers valorize other occurrences of slash l slash an msa, an imitation of their spoken dialects. The emphatic consonant slash da slash was actually pronounced, or possibly a euro either way, a highly unusual sound. The medieval Arabs actually termed their language Lugat al A. A D the language of the AOEAD, since they thought the sound was unique to their language. Arabic has consonants traditionally termed emphatic slash T E, D, S E, A degree E slash, which exhibit simultaneous pharyngealization as well as varying degrees of velarization so they may be written with the valarized or pharyngealized diacritic as slash ti d si a degree i slash this simultaneous articulation is described as retracted tongue root by phonologists in some transcription systems emphasis is shown by capitalizing the letter for example slash da slash is written i day copyright in others the letter is underlined or has a dot below it, for example, IA. I copyright. Vowels and consonants can be phonologically short or long. Long consonants are normally written doubled in Latin transcription, reflecting the presence of the Arabic diacritic mark shada, which indicates doubled consonants. In actual pronunciation, Doubled consonants are held twice as long as short consonants. This consonant lengthening is phonemically contrastive, uu kabbalah he accepted vs. uuu kabbalah he kissed. Arabic has two kinds of syllables, open syllables and a euro enclosed syllables, and the syllable types with two mori, i.e. cvc and cvv are termed heavy syllables, while those with three mori, i.e. CVVC and CVCC, are super heavy syllables. Super heavy syllables in classical Arabic occur in only two places, at the end of the sentence and in words such as plus or minus u a n a r r hot, u, u copyright mod stuff, substance, u t a a n a j a they disputed with each other where a long A occurs before two identical consonants. In surface pronunciation, every vowel must be preceded by a consonant. There are no cases of hiatus within a word. Some words do have an underlying vowel at the beginning, such as the definite article al or words such as plus or minus ishtara he bought, u, superscript one ishtama e meeting. When actually pronounced, one of three things happens. Word stress is not phonemically contrastive in standard Arabic. It bears a strong relationship to vowel length. The basic rules for modern standard Arabic are Examples, Ki ta bi book, Ka ti bi writer, Mak ta bi desk, Ma ka ti bi desks, Mak ta bi a ton library library in short pronunciation, ka ta bi a they wrote equals ka ta bulletin, ka ta bi a h they wrote it equals ka ta bi a, ka ta bi a ta they wrote, ka tab two i wrote equals ka tabbed. Doubled consonants count as two consonants, ma jal la magazine, ma a yin al l place. These rules may result in differently stressed syllables when final case endings are pronounced, versus the normal situation where they are not pronounced, as in the above example of Mac TA BA TUN library in full pronunciation, but Mac TA BA library in short pronunciation. The restriction on final long vowels does not apply to the spoken dialects where original final long vowels have been shortened and secondary final long vowels have arisen from loss of original final who slash high. Some dialects have different stress rules. 
In the Cairo dialect a heavy syllable may not carry stress more than two syllables from the end of a word, hence Mad R.A. Saw School, Q.A., Hira Cairo. This also affects the way that modern standard Arabic is pronounced in Egypt. In the Arabic of Sana'a, stress is often retracted, Baitain two houses, Ma sat hum their table, Ma ka ta bi desks, Zia rat a yen a n sometimes, Mad r a sat hum their school. The final short vowels are often not pronounced in this language despite forming part of the formal paradigm of nouns and verbs. The following levels of pronunciation exist. This is the most formal level actually used in speech. All endings are pronounced as written, except at the end of an utterance, where the following changes occur. This is a formal level of pronunciation sometimes seen. It is somewhat like pronouncing all words as if they were in pausal position. The following changes occur. This is the pronunciation used by speakers of modern standard Arabic in extemporaneous speech, i.e. when producing new sentences rather than simply reading a prepared text. It is similar to formal short pronunciation except that the rules for dropping final vowels apply even when a clitic suffix is added. Basically, short vowel case and mood endings are never pronounced and certain other changes occur that echo the corresponding colloquial pronunciations. Specifically, as mentioned above, many spoken dialects have a process of emphasis spreading, where the emphasis of emphatic consonants spreads forward and back through adjacent syllables pharyngealizing all nearby consonants and triggering the back allophone in all nearby low vowels. The extent of emphasis spreading varies. For example, in Moroccan Arabic, it spreads as far as the first full vowel on either side, in many Levantine dialects, it spreads indefinitely, but is blocked by any slash j slash or slash slash, while in Egyptian Arabic, it usually spreads throughout the entire word, including prefixes and suffixes. In Moroccan Arabic, slash iu slash also have emphatic allophones and, respectively, unstressed short vowels, especially slash iu slash, are deleted in many contexts. Many sporadic examples of short vowel change have occurred. Most Levantine dialects merge short slash iu slash into slash c slash in most contexts. In Moroccan Arabic, on the other hand, short slash u slash triggers labialization of nearby consonants, and then short slash a i u slash all merge into slash c slash, which is deleted in many contexts. This essentially causes the wholesale loss of the short long vowel distinction, with the original long vowels slash a e i e u e slash remaining as half long, phonemically slash a i u slash, which are used to represent both short and long vowels in borrowings from literary Arabic. Most spoken dialects have monophthongized original slash a j a slash to slash e e o e slash. In Moroccan Arabic, these have subsequently merged into original slash iue slash. In some dialects, there may be more or fewer phonemes than those listed in the chart above. For example, non-Arabic is used in the Maqraba dialects as well in the written language mostly for foreign names. Semitic became extremely early on in Arabic before it was written down. A few modern Arabic dialects, such as Iraqi distinguish between and. The Iraqi Arabic also uses sounds, and uses Persian adding letters, e.g., uu copyright gaja a euro a plum, uu, copyright chima a euro a truffle and so on. Early in the expansion of Arabic, the separate emphatic phonemes and coalesced into a single phoneme. Many dialects subsequently lost interdental fricatives, 
converting into. Most dialects borrow learned words from the standard language using the same pronunciation as for inherited words, but some dialects without interdental fricatives render original in borrowed words as. Another key distinguishing mark of Arabic dialects is how they render the original velar and uvular plosives slash q slash, slash de slash, and slash k slash. Pharyngealization of the emphatic consonants tends to weaken in many of the spoken varieties, and to spread from emphatic consonants to nearby sounds. In addition, the emphatic allophone automatically triggers pharyngealization of adjacent sounds in many dialects. As a result, it may be difficult or impossible to determine whether a given coronal consonant is phonemically emphatic or not especially in dialects with long-distance emphasis spreading. But the latter is not. As in other Semitic languages, Arabic has a complex and unusual morphology. Arabic has a non-concatenative root and pattern morphology, a root consists of a set of bare consonants, which are fitted into a discontinuous pattern to form words. For example, the word for I wrote is constructed by combining the root KTB right with the pattern AA2IXED to form Katab to I wrote. Other verbs meaning IXED will typically have the same pattern but with different consonants, e.g. Kari 1 fourth 2 I read, Akal 2 I ate, Tahab 2 I went, although other patterns are possible. From a single root KTB, Numerous words can be formed by applying different patterns. Nouns in literary Arabic have three grammatical cases, three numbers, two genders, and three states. The cases of singular nouns are indicated by suffixed short vowels. The feminine singular is often marked by slash at slash, which is reduced to slash a slash or slash a slash before a pause. Plural is indicated either through endings or internal modification. Definite nouns include all proper nouns, all nouns in construct state and all nouns which are prefixed by the definite article slash al slash. Indefinite singular nouns add a final slash n slash to the case marking vowels, giving slash un slash, slash and slash or slash and slash. Adjectives in literary Arabic are marked for case, number, gender, and state, as for nouns. However, the plural of all non-human nouns is always combined with a singular feminine adjective, which takes the slash a slash or slash at slash suffix. Pronouns in literary Arabic are marked for person, number, and gender. There are two varieties, independent pronouns, and enclitics. Enclitic pronouns are attached to the end of a verb, noun, or preposition and indicate verbal and prepositional objects or possession of nouns. The first person singular pronoun has a different enclitic form used for verbs and for nouns or prepositions. Nouns, verbs, pronouns, and adjectives agree with each other in all respects. However, non-human plural nouns are grammatically considered to be feminine singular. Furthermore, a verb in a verb initial sentence is marked as singular regardless of its semantic number when the subject of the verb is explicitly mentioned as a noun. Numerals between 3 and 10 show chiasmic agreement in that grammatically masculine numerals have feminine marking and vice versa. Verbs in literary Arabic are marked for person, gender, and number. They are conjugated in two major paradigms, two voices, and six moods. The fifth and sixth moods, the energetics, exist only in classical Arabic but not in MSA. There are also two participles in a verbal noun, but no infinitive. The past and non-past paradigms are sometimes also termed perfective and imperfective, indicating the fact that they actually represent a combination of tense and aspect. 
the moods other than the indicative occur only in the non-past, and the future tense is signaled by prefixing sa or safa onto the non-past. The past and non-past differ in the form of the stem, and also use completely different sets of affixes for indicating person, number, and gender. In the past, the person, number, and gender are fused into a single suffixal morpheme, while in the non-past, a combination of prefixes and suffixes are used. The passive voice uses the same person-slash-number-slash-gender affixes but changes the vowels of the stem. The following shows a paradigm of a regular Arabic verb, kataba to write. Note that in modern standard, the energetic mood is almost never used. Like other Semitic languages, and unlike most other languages, Arabic makes much more use of non-concatenative morphology to derive words than adding prefixes or suffixes to words. For verbs, a given root can occur in many different derived verb stems, each with one or more characteristic meanings and each with its own templates for the past and non-past stems, active and passive participles, and verbal noun. These are referred to by Western scholars as Form I, Form II, and so on through Form 15. These stems encode grammatical functions such as the causative, intensive and reflexive. Stems sharing the same root consonants represent separate verbs, albeit often semantically related, and each is the basis for its own conjugational paradigm. As a result, these derived stems are part of the system of derivational morphology, not part of the inflectional system. Examples of the different verbs formed from the root ktb right. Form 2 is sometimes used to create transitive denominative verbs, Form V is the equivalent used for intransitive denominatives. The associated participles and verbal nouns of a verb are the primary means of forming new lexical nouns in Arabic. This is similar to the process by which, for example, the English gerund meeting has turned into a noun referring to a particular type of social, often work-related event where people gather together to have a discussion. Another fairly common means of forming nouns is through one of a limited number of patterns that can be applied directly to roots, such as the nouns of location in ma. The only three genuine suffixes are as follows. The spoken dialects have lost the case distinctions and make only limited use of the dual. They have lost the mood distinctions other than imperative, but many have since gained new moods through the use of prefixes. They have also mostly lost the indefinite nonation and the internal passive. The following is an example of a regular verb paradigm in Egyptian Arabic. The Arabic alphabet derives from the Aramaic through Nabataean to which it bears a loose resemblance like that of Coptic or Cyrillic scripts to Greek script. Traditionally, there were several differences between the Western and Middle Eastern versions of the Alphabeta Euro in particular, the Fe one-fourth had a dot underneath and Kaf a single dot above in the Maghrib, and the order of the letters was slightly different. However, the old Maghrib variant has been abandoned except for calligraphic purposes in the Maghrib itself, and remains in use mainly in the Quranic schools of West Africa. Arabic, like all other Semitic languages, is written from right to left. There are several styles of script, notably Nasq, which is used in print and by computers, and Rukha, which is commonly used in handwriting. After Khalil ibn Ahmad al-Farahidi finally fixed the Arabic script around 786, many styles were developed, both for the writing down of the Quran and other books, and for inscriptions on monuments as decoration. Arabic calligraphy has not fallen out of use as calligraphy has in the Western world, and is still considered by Arabs as a major art form 
calligraphers are held in great esteem. Being cursive by nature, unlike the Latin script, Arabic script is used to write down a verse of the Quran, a hadith, or simply a proverb. The composition is often abstract, but sometimes the writing is shaped into an actual form such as that of an animal. One of the current masters of the genre is Hassan Masoudi. In modern times the intrinsically calligraphic nature of the written Arabic form is haunted by the thought that a typographic approach to the language, necessary for digitized unification, will not always accurately maintain meanings conveyed through calligraphy. Literary Arabic 2 Nouns and Adjectives Verbs Derivation Colloquial Varieties 2 Writing System Calligraphy Romanization A final vowel, long or short, may not be stressed, only one of the last three syllables may be stressed, given this restriction, the last heavy syllable is stressed, if it is not the final syllable, if the final syllable is super heavy and closed it receives stress, if no syllable is heavy or super heavy, the first possible syllable is stressed, as a special exception, in Form 7 and 8 verb forms stress may not be on the first syllable, despite the above rules, hence in Katab he subscribed, Yan Katib he subscribes, Yan Katib he should subscribe. Likewise Form 8 ish ta ra he bought, yash ta ra he buys. Final short vowels are not pronounced. The entire indefinite noun endings in and un are left off. The ending in is left off of nouns preceded by a ta e three fourth marba a superscript one a copyright, but pronounced as a in other nouns. The ta e one fourth marba a superscript one a itself is pronounced as h. Most final short vowels are not pronounced. However, the following short vowels are pronounced. Feminine plural na, shortened vowels in the jussive slash imperative of defective verbs, e.g., ir me, throw, second person singular feminine past tense ti and likewise anti u, sometimes, first person singular past tense to, sometimes, second person masculine past tense ta and likewise anta u, final a in certain short words, e.g., lesa is not, safa. There are a number of different standards for the romanization of Arabic, i.e. methods of accurately and efficiently representing Arabic with the Latin script. There are various conflicting motivations involved, which leads to multiple systems. Some are interested in transliteration, i.e. representing the spelling of Arabic while others focus on transcription, i.e. representing the pronunciation of Arabic. Some systems, e.g. for scholarly use, are intended to accurately and unambiguously represent the phonemes of Arabic, generally making the phonetics more explicit than the original word in the Arabic script. These systems are heavily reliant on diacritical marks such as A for the sound equivalently written SH in English. Other systems are intended to help readers who are neither Arabic speakers nor linguists with intuitive pronunciation of Arabic names and phrases. These less scientific tend to avoid diacritics and use digraphs. These are usually simpler to read but sacrifice the definiteness of the scientific systems, and may lead to ambiguities, e.g. whether to interpret sh as a single sound, as in gash, or a combination of two sounds, as in gas house. The ala lc romanization solves this problem by separating the two sounds with a prime symbol, e.g., asa euro superscript to hal easier. During the last few decades and especially since the 1990s, 
Western invented text communication technologies have become prevalent in the Arab world, such as personal computers, the World Wide Web, email, bulletin board systems, IRC, instant messaging and mobile phone text messaging. Most of these technologies originally had the ability to communicate using the Latin script only, and some of them still do not have the Arabic script as an optional feature. As a result, Arabic-speaking users communicated in these technologies by transliterating the Arabic text using the Latin script, sometimes known as I am Arabic. To handle those Arabic letters that cannot be accurately represented using the Latin script, numerals and other characters were appropriated. For example, the numeral 3 may be used to represent the Arabic letter I superscript 1 I copyright. There is no universal name for this type of transliteration, but some have named it Arabic chat alphabet. Other systems of transliteration exist such as using dots or capitalization to represent the emphatic counterparts of certain consonants. For instance, using capitalization, the letter I I copyright, may be represented by D. Its emphatic counterpart, I I copyright, may be written as D. In most of present-day North Africa, the Western Arabic numerals are used. However, in Egypt and Arabic-speaking countries to the east of it, the Eastern Arabic numerals are in use. When representing a number in Arabic, the lowest valued position is placed on the right, so the order of positions is the same as in left-to-right scripts. Sequences of digits such as telephone numbers are read from left to right but numbers are spoken in the traditional Arabic fashion, with units and tens reversed from the modern English usage. For example, 24 is said for and 20 just like in the German language and classical Hebrew, and 1975 is said 1,905 and 70 or, more eloquently, 1,905 Academy of the Arabic Language is the name of a number of language regulation bodies formed in the Arab League. The most active are in Damascus and Cairo. They review language development, monitor new words and approve inclusion of new words into their published standard dictionaries. They also publish old and historical Arabic manuscripts. Arabic has been taught worldwide in many elementary and secondary schools, especially Muslim schools. Universities around the world have classes that teach Arabic as part of their foreign languages, Middle Eastern studies, and religious studies courses. Arabic language schools exist to assist students to learn Arabic outside the academic world. There are many Arabic language schools in the Arab world and other Muslim countries. Because the Quran is written in Arabic and all Islamic terms are in Arabic, millions of Muslims study the language. Software and books with tapes are also important part of Arabic learning, as many of Arabic learners may live in places where there are no academic or Arabic language school classes available. Radio series of Arabic language classes are also provided from some radio stations. A number of websites on the Internet provide online classes for all levels as a means of distance education, most teach modern standard Arabic, but some teach regional varieties from numerous countries. With the sole example of medieval linguist Abu Hayyan al garnadi who, while a scholar of the Arabic language, was not ethnically Arab, scholars of the Arabic language made no efforts at studying comparative linguistics, considering all other languages inferior. In modern times, the educated upper classes in the Arab world have taken a nearly opposite view. 
Yasir Suleiman wrote in 2011 that studying and knowing English or French in most of the Middle East and North Africa have become a badge of sophistication and modernity and feigning, or asserting, weakness or lack of facility in Arabic is sometimes paraded as a sign of status, class, and perversely, even education through a ma copyright lang of code switching practices. Arab American professor Frank Salama went as far as to declare Arabic a dead language conveying dead ideas, blaming its stagnation for Arab intellectual stagnation and lamenting that great writers in Arabic are judged by their command of the language and not the merit of the ideas they express with it. Notes Bibliography All the rules for formal short pronunciation apply except as follows, the past tense singular endings written formally as two ta ti are pronounced t t t i. But masculine e3 fourth and ta is pronounced in full, unlike in formal short pronunciation, the rules for dropping or modifying final endings are also applied when a clitic object or possessive suffix is added. If this produces a sequence of three consonants, then one of the following happens, depending on the speaker's native colloquial variety, a short vowel is consistently added, either between the second and third or the first and second consonants, or, a short vowel is added only if an otherwise unpronounceable sequence occurs, typically due to a violation of the sonority hierarchy, or, a short vowel is never added but consonants like RLMN occurring between two other consonants will be pronounced as a syllabic consonant, when a doubled consonant occurs before another consonant, it is often shortened to a single consonant rather than a vowel added. U slash Q slash retains its original pronunciation in widely scattered regions such as Yemen, Morocco, and urban areas of the Maghrib. It is pronounced as a glottal stop in several prestige dialects, such as those spoken in Cairo, Beirut, and Damascus. But it is rendered as a voiced velar plosive in Persian Gulf, Upper Egypt, parts of the Maghrib, and less urban parts of the Levant. In Iraqi Arabic it sometimes retains its original pronunciation and is sometimes rendered as a voiced velar plosive, depending on the word. Some traditionally Christian villages in rural areas of the Levant render the sound as, as do she i baranis. In some Gulf dialects, it is palatalized to or. It is pronounced as a voiced uvular constrictive in Sudanese Arabic. Many dialects with a modified pronunciation for slash q slash maintain the pronunciation in certain words borrowed from the classical language. Slash de slash is pronounced as an affricate in Iraq and much of the Arabian Peninsula, but is pronounced in most of North Egypt and parts of Yemen and Oman, in Morocco, Tunisia, and the Levant, and, in most words in much of the Persian Gulf, slash k slash usually retains its original pronunciation, but is palatalized to slash t slash in many words in Israel and the Palestinian territories, Iraq, and much of the Arabian Peninsula. Often a distinction is made between the suffixes slash ak slash and slash ik slash, which become slash ak slash and slash iti slash, respectively. In Sana'a, Omani, and Barani slash ik slash is pronounced slash i slash. Katabdu I wrote, Katabtu I had written, Katabtu I corresponded, Aktabtu I dictated, Iktatabtu I subscribed, Takatabna we corresponded with each other, Akshubu I write, Yukatibu I have written, Ukatabu I correspond, Uktibu I dictate, Aktadibu I subscribe, Natakatabu we correspond each other, Kotiba it was written, Uktiba it was dictated, Maktub written, Mutab dictated, Kitabi book, Kotab books, Katib writer, Kutabi writers, Maktab desk, 
office, Maktaba library, bookshop, etc. The feminine suffix a, variously derives terms for women from related terms for men, or more generally terms along the same lines as the corresponding masculine, e.g. Maktaba library, the nisba suffix ei. This suffix is extremely productive, and forms adjectives meaning related to x. It corresponds to English adjectives in ic, al, an, y, ist, etc., the feminine nisba suffix eya. This is formed by adding the feminine suffix a onto nisba adjectives to form abstract nouns. For example, from the basic root shrk share can be derived the form 8 verb ishtaraka to cooperate, participate, and in turn its verbal noun k cooperation, participation can be formed. This in turn can be made into a nisba adjective ishtaraka socialist, from which an abstract noun ishtaraka socialism can be derived. Other recent formations are Jumharaya Republic and the Gaddafi-specific variation Jamaharaya People's Republic. Numerals Language Standards Regulators As a foreign language Arabic speakers and other languages